Now we're going to review the raised lower valve on a Borgo standard drill. Today we're going to talk about the two valves that make the standard valve set up for the Borgo independent drills. So you have the directional control valve along with our opener down pressure valve. First let's focus in on the directional control valve. So as we can see by our valve block we have fittings coming in from the tractor remote going into TR, TR DCP. That's a pressure port for the depth control and directional control. And then the return line is a TR, TR DCR. It's crucial that those two be connected in the proper order. Always have to have pressure coming in here and return coming in here. The other side of the block is wing lift. So we have TR, TR, WLP and TR, TR, WL, R. That's all wing lift stuff. We'll talk about that later. So now when the oil enters our directional control valve, it comes in on the P port and then it's ported over to our directional control valve slash solenoid. This changes from up to down, raise to lower. So I've got a directional control valve here, a used one. We're just going to focus in on so we can talk a little bit about what's going on here. So on our valve we have a P port, so P. That P port is directionally connected to the P port on the block. So that's the same oil. In the lowering position, so the seating position, P is connected to A. So A supplies hydraulic force to the base end of the opener cylinders to engage them in the ground. The B port is connected to the rod end of those cylinders. So when we're going down, P sends oil over to A and the return path is through B. The T port on the block, so there's two T ports down at the bottom, T and T, they're connected to the return side of this valve. So that's how that works. So when we are sitting still with no power to the coil, so we have no power to the coil up here, the natural state of this solenoid is open to A. So openers going down. There is a spring on the back side by this nut on the left here that pushes the spool over to the right and that opens up the path to A. So an effective way to verify that our oil is running in the proper direction is to simply disconnect the power on this coil and then the openers should be going down. Then when we power up that coil, what's happening is we're re shuttling the spool across this way against the spring and opening up a path to B. So now we're pressuring up the rod end on the opener cylinders to raise the openers and the base end becomes the return to raise the openers. A common scenario to have happen is for the openers to stick up. So it's quite easy to verify that the power is turning off so we can even just unplug it and if the openers remain stuck in the raised position or sticking in the raised position then it would indicate we have an issue with the return spool. There could be debris in it so on and so forth 
It's fairly easy to pull this plug off the back side. Make sure you release all the pressure in the circuit. There may be trapped pressure from check valves and so on. We want to be safe. There's springs on the blind side, a small spring, a large spring, and it's possible that these springs could be losing tension over time. So there's a couple things you can do. You could stretch them out a little bit, but really an easier fix would be to take a dime, fits nicely in this hole, put it in the cap here, put your springs back on top of the dime, and then reinsert the cap in the end of the spool. That's a very effective way to get a little extra pressure on that return spring. Another issue that kind of popped up recent years was our action from forward to reverse on this spool is moving a large volume of oil changing directions. So it sends a little bit of a shock back through the uh, hydraulics to the tractor and some of the newer hydraulic valves on the tractors are quite sensitive to this violent action. So a lot of the tractor manufacturers have tried to figure out ways to dampen that effect on software through the valves but we figured out a way to dampen that effect with this solenoid. So in the center of the spool there is this plug. So it's a little Allen head plug. We could remove it and install an orifice fitting to allow a bit of the pressured oil to bleed off. We release the bulletin number TSB 13 of 2018 showing removing the existing plug and it shows what it looks like when it has the orifice installed. So you can see by the image that it has a hex nut type orifice where the existing plug had this little Allen head plug. Let's review what you've just learned. So we're looking at the 3441-23 drawing. That is the block assembly. Not including the directional control spool. Over on the right hand side of your picture is the directional control spool location. A port feeds the openers on the base end. If it had mid row banners, you can see that they're ported together within the block. The B port is connected to the rod end of the openers cylinders and again ported together with a mid row bander R port. The P port goes directly to the tractor. The T, T ports, there's two of them. They're both returns back to the tractor. Within the block, we can see that all of our returns are teed together. The P port supplies the oil that would be shifting in the valve to shift between A and B. It also energizes PO checks for wing lift.